the will in the world. We believe that if we overeat, it's because the food is really good or because we're really hungry. In reality, I think those are two of the last things that influence how much we eat. We got the barbecue. So we divided our chicken wing eaters into two groups. They didn't know it, but servers were clearing the plates for half the group and leaving the dirty plates for the other half, meaning one group can see exactly how many wings they've eaten. Folks in the other group have to rely on their memories and their stomachs. So what are we doing here? What, what's going on? One of the things we're looking at here is whether you eat with your eyes or you eat with your stomach. So which is it, eyes or stomach? To find out, we visited Wansink at his food and brand lab at Cornell. Here what we do is we study why people eat the things they eat. What we want to do is we want to capture what goes on in a normal, typical home. If your typical house had one-way mirrors, if it had cameras up in the walls, and if it had hidden scales underneath cloths and underneath tables, what we can do is get a very good idea on why we are so easily tricked into overeating without realizing it. What he finds is jaw-dropping. We are a nation of mindless eaters. Much of what we eat, and especially how much we eat, ends up being determined by what's around us. Two of the biggest influences on us end up being visibility and convenience. And there's nothing to stop us from reaching out, grabbing something, and eating something. We'll continue to do so till something tells us to stop. Here's something to keep in mind. You'll eat more if you're eating family style, with more helpings and arms length away. Or if you're eating from a large plate or bowl, or eating directly from the bag. You'll eat more if you're distracted, watching television, or talking to friends, or eating in the car. We live with an embarrassment of food. I mean, almost any given time, we are just yards away from either a candy machine or a supermarket or someplace like that, or a refrigerator. And this is something that 75 years ago was unheard of. In one experiment, Wansink placed candy jars of chocolate in office workers' cubicles for a month, then moved the candy six feet away. Suddenly, those same workers were eating fewer candies. That's right. Simply moving the candy six feet meant five fewer candies a day. That's 125 calories, 12 pounds a year. If something is very visible, every time we see it, we have to make a decision. Do I want to eat that? Do I not want to eat that? Do I want that piece of candy in my desk? Do I not want to? And we can say no to it 27 times. But if it's visible, the 28th or 29th time, we might start saying, Maybe. And by time 30 or 31, we're saying, what the heck, I'm hungry. In another study, people at the movies received free bags of popcorn. The moviegoers who received bigger bags ate more. And here's the kicker. All the popcorn was stale. Back at the restaurant... We've marked a bowl for every person here. So every person has a, their own bowl of wing refuse assigned to them. Right. So this is table 71. And this is person number one. That's how much they've eaten. Oh, my God. We think these external cues, like the signals in your environment, have a tremendous impact in causing you to eat 200, 300, 400 more calories a day. And over the course of a year, this can be 20, 30, or 40 pounds extra than you'd otherwise not eat. So for someone at home, if they wanted to take away a lesson here, what is something they could do to sort of remind themselves to eat less? One thing is that you have to see it before you eat it. If you end up eating out of a big bag of chips or a <laughs> big corn of ice cream. You can eat a lot before it looks like you've even made a dent. Because you're going to be eating with your eyes and not with your stomach. Well, one easy thing to do is at least dish out what you want to eat before you start. How about you? How, about you? how many? Are you asking how many I have? <laughs> He's the most. I, I lost track, and I know you guys are probably counting. We were. And after an hour chowing down on wings, we weighed the results. So what we're going to do is weigh these things, count the bones, we'll know how much the person ate. In our experiment, those who had their plates cleared and couldn't see how much they'd eaten consumed 14% more chicken after controlling for age, gender, and body mass index. In similar studies, Wansing found people ate twice as much. Help yourself, as many as you want. And after eating all the wings they wanted in the middle of the afternoon, we tempted our guests one more time with cookies. Oh my God. 
three quarters, three out of four, took the cookies. And one for the room. Up next, why this woman says it's easier to find a handgun than a tomato in this Chicago neighborhood. 